appreciate it. Thank y'all. Can I take this Gatorade? Hey, can y'all still recording? Are y'all still recording? Hey, Gatorade, listen, let me tell y'all something. Hey, I love y'all so much. This Gatorade, I love it. Uh, this is probably my favorite kind, actually. If y'all need, you know, anybody to do anything for y'all, uh, you know, give me a call, you know? Thank y'all. Nicole Hardman trying to get himself a little Gatorade deal. I always love the look, and I think they started it about 15 years ago. I think I first noticed it after the Giants beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl where you take the big T-shirt and put it over your jersey and pads because I remember Eli Manning kind of looked like Frankenstein with that T-shirt on. I mean, it was just – it's a weird look. To have a T-shirt over top of your jersey and pads, but that was Nicole Hardman enjoying his time after the Super Bowl. All right, Unsung Heroes from Super Bowl 58. We have a trivia question. Ooh, that's a rarity. Chris, Patrick, football historian. Let's see how much history you know. Patrick Holmes was the second quarterback to ever lead his team in both passing and rushing yards in a Super Bowl victory. Who was the first. Ooh, this is a good one. You know, my dad, I know, was up there in this. I don't know if that's the correct answer, and I'm not going to choose that. I'm going to go with Steve McNair uh, against the Rams in, what was that, Super Bowl 34, I believe. I'm going to go. Oh, he has to win. He didn't win. I got you. All right. All right. Hold on a second. You're very close. You're very close. You're and very close. There? No, you're very right, close I, I in names. Up. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go Steve ahead. Give Young. Me. Who is it? We just sat oh. him last week. Laissez faire. Oh, my God. You took a very laissez faire approach to that question. Steve Young, football historian. 325 passing yards, 49 rushing yards in Super Bowl 29. They didn't need many rushing yards. Every pass play they called that game worked. All right. Unsung heroes from Super Bowl 58. And I. And I am reminded that when Pete handles one of these drafts, he does a great job. And I'm not being sarcastic. He does a great job of giving us options. So thank you, Pete. Chris, you're up. All right. Well, I'm going to go with one that just an uh, incredible moment of the football game. We sometimes don't give guys credit for their ability to jump on a football and corral it. And that's where I'm going to go with Jalen Watson. Jalen Watson is the one that recovered the – Muff punt of Ray Ray McLeod that went off the foot of I can't remember exactly who it was. But in that moment right there, 10-6 to football game, 49ers are about to get the ball back, ball's loose on the field, and it wasn't an easy one to recover, right? There was a lot of 49ers around. Jalen Watson for a DB, usually a DB because they don't have great hands, did an incredible job jumping on that fumble. And then the next play, of course, we know resulted in a Chiefs touchdown. Whoa, we lost Florio. Damn, I like it. Man, I'm still here on Zoom. All right, well, I'm going to continue my draft. draft. My next one, I think I'm going to go uh, – I'm going to go with George Karlaftis, okay, of the Kansas City Chiefs along the same lines. Karlaftis, big fumble recovery on the first drive of the football game, okay? Not not only that, again, similar to Jalen Watson, where there was a lot of 49ers players around the ball, right? So steal a possession there. But even Karlaftis beyond that, Karlaftis' presence was known throughout the football game. He was around the football a lot. He was really good on the edge on the McCaffrey run game. He got around Purdy a bunch. Again, the stats won't say it, but he effed some plays up, as we know, Mike. Did you get my first pick? Or was I dead? Was no, I we didn't. You were dead. Trent McDuffie. Trent McDuffie was my first pick with the defensive play of the game, the blitz on Brock Purdy that screwed up the play that if they had converted, the 49ers might have had a walk-off field goal to win the game in very anticlimactic fashion. And then my second pick would be Harrison Butker, who had four field goals on the day, including the 57-yard of the longest in Super Bowl history. He now has the record all-time in Super Bowls with nine field goals made in his career let's take a break one more round when pft live continues right after this all right there are our picks so far for the unsung heroes in super bowl 58 christopher you are up 
Well, all right. I mean, the, the last one I'm going to go with is Nick Bosa, right? Nick Bosa was – I'm, I'm going to say – other than Chris Jones, who I can't call an unsung hero because he won the game and he gets a lot of credit, I, I would say Nick Bosa maybe was the best defensive player on the football field. He had 12 pressures, you know, effed a lot of plays up, was big in the run game coming off the edge and pursuing on the backside, had Mahomes flustered and made Mahomes move a bunch. I'll go Bosa, Mike. I'm going to go Tommy Townsend, the punter for the Chiefs. Punted five times, had a solid average, and most importantly – Got that high snap down on the 57-yard field goal. I saw that snap, and I thought there is no way that ball is going to make it 57 yards. And it was that three iron that was hit low, and it was no more than 20 feet incredible. off the ground, and it made it. And to get that ball down in position for Harrison Butker to hit it the way he did, very impressive. That's it, very impressive. Back home. Jawan Jennings, do with we got to give him some love, too. He was an unsung We'll hero. give him a little love, too. But, but how are you a hero if your team lost? I'm sorry, I like guys who won. That's it. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. See ya. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.